Howdy folks, this is Checkers, back again with another episode of Fallout New Vegas, this time with episode 25, and we are here outside of, was it Old Lady Gibson, maybe's establishment, and I will turn it over to Checkers the Courier. Now, all right, Eddie, someone mentioned there was a feller inside the mouth of the the thing that ain't a death claw. I guess they're called dinosaurs, Eddie. And, uh, yeah, we should go talk to him before I plumb forget the feller exists. We'll head on back to town right quick. Kind of a nice day for a, a walk through town. Is that feller? Oh, he had the red hat on. Wondered what that was about. I guess that's just one of that doctor's guards. Alright, into Novak we go. And up through the belly of the beast. There's Cliff. Welcome. Come on in. Well, thanks, Cliff. Boom. God damn it. Don't sneak up on me like that. What do you want? I hate to tell you, but you was pretty much looking right at me, so if I snuck up on you you uh, might find that a problem of your own. I was just looking around and I heard there was a sniper nest up I here. I think you better leave. No, I was just making friendly conversation. I don't have friends here. I'm not from here. No. No, you're not, are you? Maybe you shouldn't go. Not just yet. Um. Why is that? I need someone I can trust. You're a stranger. That's a start. So you only trust strangers? I said it was a start. This town, nobody looks me straight in the eye anymore. Now don't get your beret in a bunch. What do you want me to do? I want you to find something out for me. I don't know if there's anything to find, but I need someone to try. My wife was taken from our home by Legion slavers one night while I was on watch. They knew when to come, and what route to take, and they only took Carla. Someone set it up. I don't know who. And that's a different story. You're trying to track down your wife? My wife's dead. I want the son of a bitch who sold her. How do you know your wife's dead? I know, all right. That's all you need to know. All right, then what do I do if I do find this person? Bring him out in front of the nest here while I'm on duty. I work nights. I'll give you my NCR beret to put on. It'll be our signal so I know you're standing with him. And I'll take care of the rest. I need to do this myself. I'll help you out. Good. I'll make it worth your while. And one more thing. We shouldn't speak again. Not until it's over. No one in town knows that I know what happened to my wife. Best they never know. Or well, the Legion will be after me next. Alright. Yeah. Let me see where the front of this thing is. Alright. Let's see here. Now I don't know if they change inventory Welcome. how often, but let's Welcome back. Talk Gonna get you anything? Cliff, quick. What you have for sale there, Cliff? Sure thing. Have a look. Do you happen to have any mods? You have some 5.56. Five, that could come in right handy. Katana Blade. Oh, I don't see any. Oh, now? Now there's a thing. We could definitely use that particular thing. Let's see here. What can we maybe offer in exchange? Try 
trying to cut the price down here. Hydra and Jet and some Mentats, some Psycho, Rebound, some Steady, and some Turbo. Well, you know, we've knocked the price down a bit. Thank you there, Cliff. What can you tell me about Boone's wife? Can't say we spoke much. Boone did most of the buying for him. She was in the store once, but she didn't stay long. Had a look on her face like she'd smelled something sour. But far as I can remember, the gift shop smelled fine. Well, fine as it always does. All right, well, thanks, Come Cliff. back soon now. All right, let's go on out here. Peace. And, uh... Come on down to our varmint rifle and select that and mod and varmint night rifle scope. Night varmint rifle night scope even. Take a look at what we have here. Oh yes, that will do very, very nicely. Thank you, Cliff. For the time being though. Go right on back. That is so not what I meant. There we are. Put that away. There's somebody standing right over there. Let's ask them about Boone's wife. Hey there. Well, hi there, Daisy. Fine weather for flying. It's times like these that make me miss it all. You were a pilot? Vertebird pilot. 71 missions and only lost one chopper. Wow. Rotor malfunction over Klamath. Hard landing, but I walked away. You are a much better vertebrate pilot than some others I've heard about. What are you doing, Novak? I help folks strip down the more complicated bits of salvage they bring in. Engines, mostly. The bits and pieces we take out are usually worth more than the whole thing put together. Huh. Did you fly for the NCR? Four? No, not exactly. It was a long time ago. Things are a lot different these days, and those days are way behind me. Daisy, was you out shooting up to NCR? All right, I guess you don't know Boone's wife. Well, thanks. Watch your six out there. Let's see. Eddie, you're doing the thing again. What we got here? We got a room that, well, we'd get caught going into. Manny Vargas's room. Here's a well, Manny. If you can, what's going on, man? If you can take some time to stop walking into your table, I'd like to ask who you are. I'm Manny. I'm on security detail here. You see a rifle barrel sticking out of the dinosaur's mouth? You got a 50/50 shot. It's me. Otherwise, it's Boone. Does he eat you often? And what do you protect your town from? You name it. Anything that comes within a thousand yards that looks like trouble. Lately, we've been getting ghouls, coming from the road to Repcon out to the west. Quite a few last couple days. The big threat is the Legion coming from the east. If they decide to attack with a full force, they'll run us over. But so far, we've been lucky. Hmm. And, uh, tell me about Boone. Boone's a sniper, same as me. Used to spot for him when we were enlisted with the NCR. After we got out, I talked him into settling down here. So, here we are. I'd introduce you, but, uh, we're not so friendly right now. Did you and Boone's wife have a little, um, falling in? Why are you on bad terms with him? Me and his wife, we didn't see eye to eye on some things. We had some pretty big arguments. One day, she turns up missing, and he hasn't said a word to me since. What did you and Boone's wife argue about? Man, you name it. See, I grew up in North Vegas, me and my cousins. We were some bad seeds. Got in with a gang, I loved it. Then something happened, and I couldn't handle it anymore. So, I enlisted, earned my future, brought down my best friend to share that future with me. And here was this woman, who was too good for it, trying to take him away. So yeah, I didn't see eye to eye with the bitch. And did you have anything to do with her wife, his wife disappearing? Believe me. When I heard the news, my first thought was, I owe somebody big. I figured Boone would come around after a while. But he hasn't. I'm starting to think that if he doesn't find her, things will never go back to the way they were. 
Not sure they will one way or t'other there, Manny. Who do you think would want to hurt Boone's wife? Man, everybody. That girl didn't have one friend in this whole town. She didn't want any. She wanted to sit in a room all day and make herself miserable, and she went out of her way to be rude. She upset a lot of people. You wouldn't have liked her either. Well, I appreciate that, Manny, but you don't know what I would or would not like. Tell me about the gang you were in. Were they tough? Were they tough? I was in the cons, man. It doesn't get any badder. Cons, you say? You know, I'm looking for a man in a checkered coat. Sure I know him. What do you want with him? Oh, you know, I want to blow his brains out. Doesn't surprise me. The guy seemed like he'd do whatever it takes to get what he wants. Probably makes a lot of enemies. Well, listen, I can definitely help you find him, but I've got problems of my own. Maybe we can do a trade. You need my help. There's something I need, too. And what do you need? Novak, it's home for me now. I want that to be for good. I like it here, and I've left too many homes behind. But the only resource we got here is junk. Without that, people wouldn't have anything to trade. They don't have to leave. We get most of it up the road from the old rocket test site. But a bunch of ghouls showed up one day and took it over. We can't get in there now. What needs being doing? Well, they gotta go. Or this'll be a ghost town before long. Doesn't matter to me what you do. As long as the ghouls are out of there, that's good enough for me. All right, I'll see what I can do. It'd mean a lot to me. All right. Yeah, see ya. Well, we know a little bit more about Boone's wife. There's a couple doors over there. There's a door here. That's Boone's room, and it's red, too. We don't want to hit the red room as long as hey there. Daisy's got her gun. Let's check this one. Lights on for our safety, Eddie. A first aid box with some rat away and a stem pack. Sometimes those things just fall right into your pocket, along with a carton of cigarettes. And then your karma kind of whines at you. Atomic cocktail, that's got some value. Don't really care about your beer. Oh, there's a star bottle cap. We'll be taking that. Put that away. Step on outside here. Another motel room. Bruce Isaac. Oh, please don't kill me. I swear I'll have... Wait, you... You don't work for Mr. Bishop, do you? No, I don't reckon I do. Why do you think I would? Sorry, it's just... You look like his type, you know? You got that hard-ass wasteland explorer thing going on. Eddie, we got hard asses, apparently. Why would this Mr. Bishop be after you? Oh, well, that's all just a big misunderstanding, see? Mr. Bishop, well, he owed me a lot of money, and, uh, you know, he's a busy guy, so I sort of figured I'd just take it off his hands. Apparently you robbed a casino boss? Robbed is such an ugly word. It's more like I took care of a payroll problem for him. Also, I might have uh, sort of plowed his daughter. A little. Wow. My hat is off to you. That takes some balls. Thanks. But if Bishop finds me and I don't have his money, my balls are going to be on his trophy wall. That's a, that's a tough break. Well, I guess I can let you know if I find any work for a singer. You do that? Great. I really appreciate that. All right. I would say that I knew you were a singer from New Reno, but, you know, my brains leaked out a bit when I got a hole put in them, so I don't remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. See you later. Yeah. Thanks for listening to my mumbling, though. All right. Well, he did not help at all. This one's red and we're detected. I'm pretty sure we're not going to find Boone's wife in my room, so... Well, let's check these before I forget they exist. Ranger Andy's bungalow. Hi there. We haven't met yet. You must be new in town. I'm Andy. 
Hey there, Andy. What do you do here? Right now, a whole lot of sitting on my keister and counting cracks in the ceiling. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. On better days, I help keep the peace. Boone and Vargas watch the road. I watch the town. Tell myself I'm doing some good. Well, at least there's a lot of cracks in your ceiling to count. Anyway, what can you tell me about Boone's wife? Carla was a knockout. Whenever Boone walked around with her, he always had this funny grin on his face like he couldn't believe his luck. I know we couldn't. That wasn't the only reason she stuck out, though. That girl never minced words. If she'd had better food or hospitality, she'd let you hear it. Trouble was, she usually had. I don't think she meant it. She really was a sweet girl. I think she just wanted to remind herself that there's still nicer places in this world than Novak. Who could blame her for that? Hmm. And what's wrong with Boone? I mean, we know the answer, but... Had his wife taken. I don't think he'll ever be the same as he was. Damn shame. I told the rangers up at the station to keep an eye out, but there's just too much ground out there for them to cover. So you were with the NCR, right? Was. Was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. You want me to go up there and check on your friends for you? Uh, no. No, they're gonna think I'm having trouble letting go. They're good soldiers. I don't give them enough credit. Tell me about the Rangers. They're the NCR's finest. A one-man platoon, each of them. You got a job where even thinking about it would scare a man senseless? That's when you bring in the Rangers. And if you see a squad of veterans, guys who are in their black armor, well, you won't find a more beautiful sight. Did you do something to your leg? Yeah, twice. Actually, the first time, it was more like half my body. Knocked me out of the Rangers. This time, it's mostly just reminded me how useless I've gotten. What happened? A few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. What did you do? I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet and that's when I see the grenade he's left by my feet. Uh -huh. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I fell down those stairs in front of the motel. Just in case I got to thinking I'd put it all behind me. Our speech isn't good enough for it. Hey, just because you're idle, you'll never walk again. I forgot where I was going with that. Now, let's not make him unhappy. We'll just say goodbye for now. Hey, uh, wait a sec. I know what I said, but if you find yourself by Ranger Station Charlie, let me know what you find. I'd be interested. All right. Well, that's, that's Manny, right? Uh, what's this? Cliff's bungalow. Well, we already talked to Cliff. We've got, um, Jeannie May, and hey there. Novak Settler. Don't listen to a word no bark says. I don't think he ever sleeps, so it's no wonder he spouts nothing but nonsense. All right. Jeannie May. I hope you're finding everything to your liking. Um, what can you tell me about... What's wrong with Boone? Nothing that wouldn't be wrong with any man who loses a wife, I suppose. Poor dear. I know he thinks she was kidnapped, but I'm not so sure she didn't just run off on her own. You could tell she was thinking about it ever since they arrived. Hmm. What can you tell me about Boone's wife? How should I put it? I guess you could say she was kind of like a cactus flower. Real pretty to look at, but... There was just no getting close to her. She never did take to living here. 
She liked the big lights and fast living of New Vegas. I got the feeling she was trying to get Boone to leave with her, but I guess she got tired of waiting. Huh. Well, I don't want to... Watch out for strangers. Be unkind to everybody, just being friendly. She's got... She's got a safe back there. All right, well... I wonder if the doc got any idea about what went down. I don't think these folks Between talk you and much. Me, I don't think she studied at an accredited institution. <laughs> hey there, doc. What can I do for you? Uh, not much. You don't appear Bye. to know anything. Well, who's that person? No Bark Noonan. Who sent you? I ain't talking. They tried to get me to talk before, but I didn't say nothing. And I don't aim to now, by gum. I don't mean you any harm, no bark. We'll just see about that. You come any closer and I'm liable to stick you with my sticking knife. Old stick is feeling mighty ornery this day. Now, no bark, don't go threatening me. That's not very kind. We can talk from the distance we're at. You sure now? It's kind of hard to hear you. Well, Mark, you done said you'd stab me with your dirty knife. Okay, okay, just speak up a little. But not so much that they hear you. They got people everywhere, always listening. So why they call you no bark? Because they know I ain't just barking here. What I say is got bite, because it's the truth. Them quack doctors can say what they want about all the rad scorpion stings that done pierced my skull. I know what I seen. Yeah, you know anything about the abduction of Boone's wife? Seen it all. Seen shadowy folk come to his room and leave again in the middle of the night. Thought one might have gone in the lobby too for a spell. Could be that person went in to get something. Or used the John, maybe. Mighty interesting either way, you ask me. I thought it was cannibals, come to eat us all for sure. So I kept out of sight. But now I know better. Hmm. Who was it? Mole rat men. Come up from the underneath to steal young women with promises of riches and fancy mud mansions with all the latest designer appliances. They covered our lady folks' long hair for wigs, it said, being either bald or balding themselves. Uh-huh. And, uh, what's been going on in town? There's been things of a disturbing nature going on at the McBride Corral. Seems every night one of their herd meets a most unnatural death. And always there's holes all over the body. Work of the Chupacabra, the livestock vampire, says Nobark. But they don't pay no mind. Too many holes, they say, and there's bullets in them. Well, says no bark, we got a chupacabra with an automatic weapon. And that's when they get real quiet, because now they see the predicament we're in. Uh-huh. I, I think I can see that predicament right well myself. What else you know about those deaths at the corral? I come face to face with the chupacabra himself one night, whilst I was investigating whether this gecko was hiding his treasure from me. He was the meanest, ugliest chupacabra you could imagine. Had two heads and fangs down to the ground. Best I could tell anyways, since when he come up to me, he was invisible. Huh. Had himself a blunderbuss, what would rotate and shoot bullets real fast out of a backpack. Never seen nothing like it. Walked right past me having an argument with somebody. But I only saw one chupacabra, so I guess the other fella had to be invisible too. Only more invisible than the other one. Uh-huh. Anything interesting happening in the area? Folks will tell you that they seen ghouls up near the rocket factory. Sensationalist hooey, cooked up by superstitious yokels, seeing phantoms of their own imagining. Is that so? And what do you think's actually happening up there? Ghosts. Kami ghosts, who don't know they're dead. Hoping to steal our rockets. 
so they can fly up and paint the moon pink and draw a Lenin face on it. I've seen one of them disappear and reappear before my very eyes. Although, being a scientist, I have to admit I might have just blinked for longer than usual, what with the shock of seeing a commie ghost and so forth. Uh-huh. Anybody been acting strange lately? I don't trust a man that doesn't have something strange going on about him, because it means he's hiding it from you. If a man's wearing his pants on his head, or if he says his words backwards from time to time, you know it's all laid out there for you. But if he's friendly to strangers and keeps his home spick and span, more often than not he's done something even his own ma couldn't forgive. Hmm. Well, thanks there, no, no bark. If anyone asks, we never spoke. Oh, believe me, I can get along with that. Huh. Well, out of all that, he did say someone went into the lobby. It does sound like he saw what happened. I think we will take a moment out here, and maybe we will check on that next time. For the moment, though, I will turn it over to Checkers Prefect. Alrighty, we went a little bit long, but there were a lot of folks to talk to. We'll have to see if we can't run down No Bark's um, lead. For the moment, though, I would like to say thank you for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and maybe just a little informative. I would like to invite you to subscribe, like, and share if you so desire, and to ask you, above all, to please take care.